text in her heart. It was a, a rumination, a going over the events, an understanding of the ramification of what it was to be a mother. In this sense, then, what Mary presents to us initially is, is that discernment is not a hot flash from God that overturns all of the natural processes that have made you who you are or I who I am, but working through our history, our temperament, our education, our understanding, God is bringing it together in a sense of an attraction towards some imperative, something I should do with my life that I may have toyed with, thought about, argued with, but now I see it more clearly. Now in the autobiography of St. Ignatius, which are his reminiscences dictated when he was comparatively an older man, he did not write them down, he dictated them. They were fragmentary, there were things that were taken out. But one of the most important moments, I think, is when Ignatius, who so desired to go to the Holy Land, Ignatius the layperson, not a cleric, went to the Holy Land and he was told, you can't stay here. We have people coming over here and they want to stay and they want to help people. The Saracens come, they kidnap them, then we have to pay a lot of money to bail you out. We're sick and tired of doing it. So the Franciscan provincial said, go back home. Then in his reflection he says, now that the pilgrim knew it was not God's will that he stay in Jerusalem, why? Because he couldn't. God doesn't ask us to do what we can't. He began to think of studies as a possibility because then perhaps he could help people. There are three movements there. I know what I can't do. I know what possibilities are in front of me and they seem to coalesce and go on and getting more studies because I keep getting yanked over to the Inquisition and they say, you have no right to talk about God, you haven't studied theology, so maybe I should go study. But what I do know that's been persistent in my life of conversion and a deepening of understanding of who God is for me is God is calling me to help people. People will tell you that the most important motto in the Jesuit spiritual life is the greater glory of God. It isn't. It's to help people. That dominates more than anything else. What helps people? The word in Latin is animas, but it doesn't mean a floating soul. It means the concrete woman or man with all their vitality. What can I do to help them be as full as God intended them to be in their life? And we see at that moment Ignatius, in a way, doing exactly what Mary was doing and how important in the discernment process and therefore in spiritual direction it is for a person to say, who am I before God? That whatever will be done in my life is going to be done by the way in which my reality becomes guided and directed in conversation in exchange by what brings me, Ignatius would say, consolation. A sense of well-being, of insight, of an ease. Sometimes it can be a struggle, but when I think about what I would like to do, but I think about how hard it is, I notice a difference. The liking to do it, the wanting to do it, is an attraction. All the obstacles to it become more or less a distraction from that. When I entered the Jesuits, I was just a kid in high school. And I still remember the principal of our school saying, well, why do you want to come to the Jesuits? And I didn't know why. I never had any attraction to priesthood. But I said, for two years, I've been working on the school paper and I'm just kind of watching things. And the idea of being a Jesuit has come to me and whenever I think of it, I feel it makes sense. When I think of, I was thinking at the time, going to Fordham and going on to study, maybe being a lawyer, I'd say, yeah, I could do that. I think it'd be good, but it doesn't catch me. 
It doesn't make me feel right. And he was the first one I could say, you know, I really don't know why. I just know when I think of not doing it, I'm jumpy. When I think of doing it, I think maybe I won't make it, I don't know, but I think I've got to try. It's something I feel invited to do. I didn't know at the time, and I didn't have the vocabulary for it, years later, when I began to study more and more about what Ignatius talks about as the second time of making a choice, which is through effective movements, I had a much better understanding of what had been happening to me, but I didn't have the vocabulary or the understanding. It's God moving through affectivity and movement. And if that movement is something that is good, if the result in me is something that brings a sense of freedom or happiness or understanding or joy or right direction, that's good. And Ignatius calls that consolation, an ease, a facility, a growing in faith. It has all kinds of ramifications. So at this point of the exercises, what Ignatius introduces Mary, she is the symbol of the human person, aware of who that person is and how God attracts that person in one way or God is not attracting in another way and they're aware of this in their life. It's not a technique. It's an awareness of something happening within myself. Now I want to go back again and underscore for you that when you're either, say you're guiding someone else and they're telling you about how God is moving in their prayer life, your job is not to tell them where to go. 